An emotional but brave walk to freedom. Raymond Mshaba, affectionately known as Uom Ray, remains etched in the hearts of those he fought for. He dedicated his entire adult life to the cause of freedom. One thing that was outstanding about him is that he was honest and hated anything negative. He encouraged us to love one another and be united. Because as my grandfather named him Mpagamisi, he wanted him to uplift the nation and he really did that and sacrificed his life. Mshaba was also an active member of the South African Communist Party. His values and principles, a path worth to follow for today's leaders. I think whoever is leading now should really take where Ray left. Because he was a very honest man. We are very shocked by how things are now. Because back in the days, he was very honest. He would approach people, even though he was far. But he was very visible when needed, especially in his party. Eradication of poverty, active economic participation, and equality for all now a primary concern for those who bear his name. Taking over where he left off. Job creation has always been important to Omre, so obviously uh, it's, it's, it's an issue going forward. And I, I really believe that post-COVID and the economic challenges that we're going to face as a nation and globally, um, we've, we've reassessed and we, we're looking at, at, at food, food relief uh, in, a, in a very coordinated way, um, ensuring that it's it's done properly. The month of October marks the world famous Rivonia trial. This led to the eventual release of Mshaba and other ANC leaders that were sentenced to life imprisonment in 1963. Anda Ngonji, SABC News, Port Elizabeth. And now for more on that story, we welcome the Speaker of the Eastern Cape Legislature, Helen Sols August. Uh, Helen, a very good morning. Thanks for making the time. Thank you so much for having me on the show and good day to all of you. What's the greatest lesson learned from Klaba's time in the struggle? Well, I, I think it's his volunteerism. Uh, the fact that he was always the first to be out there and to do the work and his unwavering commitment um, to understand that he's not in it for himself, that there is a bigger objective to achieve. I think that just stands out um, in this for the character that you was, the person that you was, as well as the statesman that you was. So uh, younger South Africans are, are probably sitting there because he's not spoken about that much. They're wondering who is this person? What would you say uh, to a millennial who is wanting to know, who's curious? Well, well firstly, they need to understand that uh, Omre was an ANC member, an activist. He was a passionate uh, communist, unwavering communist. He believed in the ideals uh, of democracy, of freedom, of non-racialism, of non-sexism. And he believed that uh, equality is a right for each and every South African and that each of us as South Africans have a right in the land of our birth. So those were his passions, those were the ideals that he held. Also the fact that um, he was one who always pursued justice. That's what made him this phenomenal trade union leader where he would go and uh, you know, to the length and the brain of the Eastern Cape as well as South Africa to form trade unions, uh, to organize them. Uh, to, to shape um, the workers' rights. So he is known for that. And, and I think that just stands out um, uh, as Omre was known amongst his, his, his comrades and amongst his peers. What will be your main emphasis of this effort to uh, memorialize him? Well, obviously, um, the theme that we're having for uh, this memorial lecture would obviously be governance and, and, and uh, good administration. Uh, Omre having been the first premier of the Eastern Cape in 1994, he was the premier who set forth the agenda for transformation, ensuring that the people are put at the center of 
every policy, of every system, of every development node that has taken place. So that is actually what we would want to celebrate his life, his legacy, his unwavering commitment for the betterment of the life of South Africans. Of course, in every uh, event where we remember a giant, we also try to speak to the issues of the day and how those relate to uh, the, that person's ideals. How are you going to use Raymond Klaber's memory to try and speak to the issues of, t of the day? Well, well obviously, if, if, you, if you look at his life, he was uh, selfless. Um, uh, dedicated for liberation and for human rights for all South Africans. He always wanted to ensure adequate service delivery by the government and by uh, the ruling party. And obviously, the, we, we cannot forget his, his, his passion for strengthening the public sector governance and administration. He was very strong uh, with dialogue, um, partnerships, and all forms of accountability. So these are the objectives also of this lecture and these are the issues that we would want to pursue uh, in having this memorial lecture uh, this evening. Of course he was not a standalone, he belonged to the African National Congress. Looking at the ANC leadership now, how do you think he would feel about uh, the current leadership and issues uh, that the party is going through? Well obviously if you knew Omrei, the in, uh, very introspective a deep thinker, um, but 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 somebody who was was you know just forthright in his in his views. I think he would be he would be somewhat saddened by the state of of, of some of the things that is happening. Obviously, uh, we cannot negate the issue of corruption that has just tarnished the image of uh, 26 years of governance. So those are the issues, obviously, that would, that really he would he would be so outspoken about. He would not even waiver to call those to account that have done wrong in the name um, of the African National Congress and of the government. Uh, so those are the issues, obviously, that uh, without even a qualm, uh, we all know that he would not have uh, wanted to, to uh, sweep under the carpet. So those are the issues. But I think also, I think he would have been uh, having been the character and the man uh, of fortitude, he would have been very much uh, uh, enamored by the response of the of the president of the country, having set forth a motion of of the SIUs and the Hawks investigations, trying to within his term now in 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 the sixth term to deal with these issues of corruption and tackle them head on. So I think um, you you have both sides disappointment in the in the levels of corruption that is emerging and. That that is forthcoming, but I think also he would have really supported the president with his unwavering stance to make sure that uh, the agencies, government agencies, deal decisively with these elements uh, within society. Yeah, it's, it's such an honor speaking to you, and I'm going to ask you to give us details of the times and if the public is allowed to connect uh, 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 online with the conversation. But I'm also going to ask you, since we have you here, you're the speaker in the Eastern Cape Legislature, and uh, a lot has been said about what has the machinations there during uh, the lockdown and, co and the fight against COVID-19. As you give us the details, please also uh, just touch on a bit on some of the challenges that the legislature has been facing in recent days. Well, the, 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 legis the memorial lecture will be hosted this evening from uh, 5 um, to 7 o'clock on our MS teams, uh, but we will also be flighting it on our um, Facebook where all members of, of, of society, those interested, will be able uh, to listen. It will also be streamed like live on our U YouTube channel. Our guest speaker is the... Um, uh, Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Tandi Modise. Um, and yes, during COVID-19, it has been in, um, a sort of a, a challenge and overcoming our traditional um, uh, ways and mechanisms of how we connect to our community, the public participation. But now that we have introduced our um, hybrid systems of going to people as well as utilizing the ICT, I think uh, COVID has just brought upon some negatives, but it has also brought about some opportunities that we can pursue, obviously, as the legislature as we are moving forward. Let's thank you for speaking to us this morning. Helen, thank Sol you so much. For August. Bless you.
uh, is the speaker for the Eastern Cape Legislature telling us there about the Raymond Mthaba lecture that's taking place this evening.